All right, you guys, welcome back to Mental Health Topics with Matt. I'm Matt, in case you didn't know. I make educational mental health videos on a variety of topics. You can check them out on the channel here. If you enjoy the content you see, feel free to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a comment if you have any video ideas or have anything you want to say. So, with all that being said, today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be about four things never to say to someone with depression. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's hundreds, about hundreds of things not to say to someone with depression. But last I checked, a lot of my videos are about 20 some minutes long. This one's going to be short. I'm hoping for about 10 to 13 minutes. So we're going to cover four things here. There are hundreds. These are four that I have heard and experienced. People have said to me. And um, we're going to try to break down the stigma of why saying some of these things is not very helpful. As a best case scenario, it's not helpful. And of course, worst case, it's kind of hurtful. So let's get started. Thing number one. Never to say to someone with depression. You just need to stop being so negative. Now, how many of you... I know I'm not the only one. I see you too. I see your hand was up. I think most people with depression have probably been told uh, that they are kind of negative. Doom and gloomy. That sort of thing. And I think where a lot of this stems from is the idea that people just want you to be more positive. Positive people want to hear more positive people saying positive things. The problem is with depression is there's many different symptoms, of course, but some of the most external symptoms, the stuff that people on the outside really tend to notice, include things like decreased energy, motivation, anhedonia, which I've mentioned in previous videos. It's uh, decreased pleasure in activities that you used to enjoy. I mean, there's things like low self-esteem and, of course, a wonderful feeling of hopelessness and or worthlessness. Now, I know what you're going to say. What does that have to do with being negative? It's just a bunch of pretty awful sounding symptoms. But I think if you are someone with depression, you kind of already know the answer to this. Basically, these symptoms, especially these externally noticeable ones to other people, they really make life a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Simplest things like taking out the trash, doing laundry, putting away dishes, showering, eating, sleeping, all these sorts of things, going to work, going to school, social interactions, all these things generally tend to be rather decreased in a depressive episode. So we're going to go into number two and kind of continue this process. So let's crush that up. Number two, in a similar kind of conversation, you're just being lazy by sleeping all day, not going to work, not talking to friends or family, anything. You're just lazy. Stop being lazy. <laughs> now, I know my mom and my parents have told me this more times than I could ever count. And it was very aggravating to hear this all the time. I am somewhat of a laid back person, but when I have to do something, I do it. I'm not quite as lazy as they made me seem. Like we said though, these symptoms of depression, the insomnia, hyper or hypo, so more or less sleeping than normal, more or less eating, increase or decrease sex drive, energy levels, and of course this also includes the social distancing, not the COVID-19 social distancing. The social distancing we would have used before the virus came along and changed our definition. 
and even speech patterns. Now one of the unique things about depression is studies have actually shown that in people with depression, speech pattern tends to be slower, less frequent, and basically take a longer time to respond. Now, when you kind of think of the cognitive impairment from depression, it kind of makes sense, right? So you have to try to hear what someone is saying and interpret it. Then you have to come up with a response and then you have to say the response the way you were thinking of it in your head. <laughs> now, even on a normal day, for some people, that can be quite a difficult task. But in the mind of a depressed person, it's even harder because the brain is just not firing as much as it usually is. So this results in slower speech and a less frequent response. They might use simpler phrases or one word answers and they might not even respond at all. So it kind of depends, but that's generally what a lot of studies I've seen have said. And of course, when you think about it, it's kind of makes sense because when you think about bipolar disorder, it's the polar opposite. You have rapid speech or kind of a need to keep talking, talk a lot more than usual. I am so guilty of this. And your thoughts are racing all the time. You know the cartoons where it's like a hamster on a wheel <laughs> spinning in circles? Yeah, that, that's going on up here, but it's it was injected with some caffeine or some sort of drug because it's racing. So it really is the opposite of depression, which again, bipolar disorder in a nutshell. Just something interesting to keep in mind. Number three, your life is so great. Why are you depressed? This one is really not helpful. <laughs> None of these are helpful, but this is one of the worst offenders. And this really comes, I think, from the idea that there needs to be a physical, tangible, easily observable, on the surface, in real life, event that must cause you to be depressed. So, the death of someone in your life, um, losing a job, or getting kicked out of school, gambling all your money in a manic episode and losing it, uh, risky sexual behaviors, substance abuse, infidelity, you name it. There needs to be some sort of horrible thing happening to you in real life, in the world, to make you depressed. And we know from research and science that that is really not true. Now, obviously these events in life can make things significantly worse for your depression, but it's more common than not that your depression is caused by a chemical imbalance in your brain not just a life event again life events can make things worse but usually in terms of clinically depressed or clinically diagnosed depression this is what we see it's a chemical imbalance of dopamine and serotonin and other neurotransmitters norepinephrine things like that. There's a few others. Those are really the big three. If this slide looks familiar, I actually borrowed this again for my antipsychotic video that I did a while back since I basically take the same presentations and modify them because it's easier than redoing all the animations and everything from scratch. So that's why this is familiar, but I liked the fact I already had the information here and it was relevant to this slide, so I kept it. What can I say? Productivity. All right, we made it to number five. Now, number five is going to be the one that is uh, made me rip out more hair, punch more holes in walls, and be more frustrated at the world than any of the others. 
although I've been told many of the others and they are also very, very much not helpful. Any guesses for number five? Well, let's see if your guess was correct. Just snap out of it. Now, I've been trying this phone for a while. I, I, I've been trying basically all week. Today's Friday now. It's 3.50 a.m. <laughs> so, let's see if it works. I've still been trying every day. Oh, you're still there. Sorry, I was waiting to snap out of it. Okay, so my biting sarcasm aside, snapping out of it, getting a grip, pulling something out of it, it's not that simple. Those of us who have depression know it's not that simple. If we could snap our fingers and have a depressed person snap out of it and not be depressed, if we could have a bipolar person, phrasing, a person with bipolar disorder, because a person is not their disorder, the disorder is a part of them, phrasing is important. You can check out the stigma video I did up above for more on that. But think about how great it could be if we could take a schizophrenic person and snap our fingers and magically they would never have hallucinations and delusions ever again. They wouldn't be diagnosed with schizophrenia anymore. If we could take a person with PSTD, PSTD, PTSD, and take away their flashbacks, no more PTSD. If we could take a dissociative identity disorder person and get rid of their altars. No more DID. The world's a great place. The problem is, it's not that simple. You can't wish it away. You can't snap it away. You can't clap it away. Although you can certainly give me applause. We can try the clap. Maybe you'll help me. I'll let you know. But it really isn't helpful. And it's just not very conductive uh, thing to say. So these were five things, or rather four things, never to say to someone with depression. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more educational mental health topic videos just like this one. Again, trying to break the stigma every chance I get. If you have any video ideas or things you'd like to see me talk about, Leave them in the comments down below and um, look forward to see you next time. I'm out. This is Mental Health Topics with Matt.